from another. I'm slightly gonna diverge from the usual recommendations I give. Mechar, hit 61 on season, get that black star and do the Magnus quest line. Yes, yes. Anyways, so this is gonna include what would have went over my head when giving tips before I started a new character and got to experience the bliss of early game again. First off, the new and shiny Penjetina system. You open the suggested tab and find this quest line, which will make you choose between accessories. I recommend you pick a crescent ring both times. What changed is that it's simpler to make it because it's not gated by daily quests anymore, finally. This means that the marketplace might have trouble to accommodate the new demand, so depending on when you watch this, some materials might be readily available. So let's go over how to acquire these items. Magical shards. You can get them by melting black magic crystals. Not to be confused with these, because these will break your bank and won't give you any. If you are looking for which crystal to pre-order and melt, I recommend you go for sealed black magic crystals. From the marketplace, you will need 540 magical shards to get your accessory to pen, totaling the cost to 1.7 billion at the highest price on marketplace, which at the time of writing this is at 2.2 million per piece. Next up is weapon blackstones. You get these by grinding. You can technically grind sharp crystal shards for them, but that is not cost effective. Just make a huge mountain of them in your storage. The size of your piled blackstones should count 18,000 in total. If you get them the highest price on the marketplace, you will total somewhere around 5.4 billion at 300,000 per piece. Again, at the time of writing this. Next, Old Moon Alchemy Catalyst. This overpriced honey will cost you 3.5 million apiece. You can get it at the nearest Old Moon Manager. You are going to need 2,300 in total, which you can acquire for the highest price so far at 8 billion. So, uh, there is one more material to acquire. Uh, this one, however, isn't so simple. Yon's fragments. You will need 180 of them. The acquisition of these can be sourced by grinding. And while you may naively think, oh, so just like blackstones, right? I will have to disappoint you and tell you no. Their drop chance is abysmal. Your primary methods of getting them will involve melting base accessories which means if you need these you should probably go somewhere where they drop my recommendation is melting orkin red belts and setup necklaces in that order you can also melt ronros rings but they are expensive melting anything else will be again very expensive so do not rush this yeah just walk up to shurikens and start hitting them indiscriminately you might even drop a potion piece and once you have gotten all your materials, you just click this button, left click them, and uh, this is all just for one pen accessory, by the way. Now, that's my bridge guide for this, so let's go over some tips. For tip 2, I'm going to talk about stacking XP buffs. See, if you press F3 and go to your loyalties tab, you can find the 530% combat and skill experience scrolls. Using these alone is uh, not gonna give you much results. Though they are, but you can make them better. And you should generally avoid using them without the daily login scrolls. By uh, the daily login scrolls, I mean the ones you get by pressing Epsilon and claiming one every day. However, you still don't want to use either one of these just yet because three of daily scrolls can be combined to give you a 600% XP buff and this 600% XP buff and the 530% one is what you're going to be using as your base to take maximum advantage of any ongoing events or just generally if you're pushing for experience. Tip 3, the tent buff and its uses. No, I'm not talking about the tent in the pro shop. This is here purely if you haven't swiped for it yet.
you can acquire the free tent from a quest line in the suggested tab. Completing it will give you an old moon camping anvil and an old moon camping shop contract. You will have to place down a tent and equip these two items on it in order to use them. So let's go over the old moon camping shop contract first. Generally, when you are grinding spots that drop rare items that you likely want, you can use the tent to give yourself an up to 50% item drop rate buff for one hour, which will cost 50 million. That's not all. You can also use it to buy potions in case you are running low on them. This part of your tent expires in 7 days and can be acquired from the nearest old moon manager. Now now the second part of your tent is also kind of important. Depending on how fast your gear breaks, the old moon camping anvil will enable you to repair your gear almost anywhere. There is a catch here though. This part of your tent will expire in 24 hours. So naturally you might need a bigger quantity of these items. So let's go over how to get the materials required for them and how to craft them. For one old moon camping anvil you will need 2 golden pearls, 2 polished stones, 10 old moon anti-corrosives, 20 steel and 2 pure vanadium crystals. So First material, two golden pearls. You can get these by gathering underwater. However, this is not my recommended way to get them. I recommend you to pre-order them on the marketplace or you can substitute them with 15 pure metro crystals which are 1.9 million apiece. Uh, you need 15 of them opposed to two golden pearls which means uh, 30 million or 4 million. Second material is old moon anti-corrosive. You need 10 of them for one anvil. You can only get them from the old moon manager. Third material, 20 steel. Heating 5 iron ore will give you iron melted shards. Then heating 5 iron melted shards together with 5 coal will give you a steel ingot or Ingots. This is however always on the marketplace and I recommend you just buy it instead of sourcing it yourself. Fourth material, polished stone. This is the most annoying one to get. It requires 10 rough stones per craft. You grind the rough stones in the processing tab and you get 1 to 4 polished stones. You can get rough stones from mining rocks, however ores won't give you any rough stones. Anyway. If you wanna do bulk gathering of rough stones, you can go to the rough stone heaven in Valencia, here. Or you can just start following the coastal cave in Valia if you need a few, here. And then just run around the caves. And the fifth and last material, vanadium pure crystal. You need two of these. You heat three vanadium ingots with one metal solvent. Uh, I recommend you source vanadium ingots and metal solvents from the marketplace. Generally, vanadiums and metal solvents are made by players who have an extensive node empire. But yeah, just making vanadium crystals yourself will save you some money. So after acquiring all of these, you will need to hit manufacture to make your old moon camping anvil. It will come as a sealed item, which means it won't consume its timer until you unseal it by right clicking it. Tip 4. Family Inventory. This quest can be found in the suggested tab. Completing this quest line will give you family wide inventory, which means items in it can be transferred to and from any new or old character. Now let's go with its usage though. Putting items that you use to feed your workers in it will let you feed them anytime. If you are feeding your workers with beer, you should stop and you should probably sell the beer. Use grilled bird meat instead because it's cheaper and better. Now you can also put your pet feed into this too. You can also further upgrade your family inventory in the loyalty tab. And with your new slots, you can fill them up with anything you want. I generally just use them for experience scrolls. Tip 5. This is not the tip itself, but it will tie into it. You can change the pet behavior to agile to get 
better pickup rates. On a side note, you can also toggle these buttons to activate their skills. Now, while all the tips I mentioned are kind of making your life a bit easier, this one will by far be the most meaningful if you are actively grinding. Acquiring your first tier 4 pet, or whether you swipe or patiently pre-order from the marketplace to get one, doesn't matter, but you should generally aim to acquire at least one, because having one tier 4 pet will enable you to access a system which can turn it into tier 5. Now, a tier 5 will not get its pickup rate further reduced, like all the other tiers, up till now. Instead, it will reduce the pickup rate of your other pets. Let's go over how to get one. You can locate this questline in the suggested tab. The questline is short, don't worry. So these are the items you're going to need and its prices and how to get them. Yes, what to fans. First off, growth agent. You're going to need 10 of these. So prepare 600 million. Yeah, you can acquire them at the old moon manager. 40 magical shards. I need 15 because I got 25 already. And 800 fine lightweight plume. So open up your processing window. Go to simple alchemy. Put 40 magical shards. 10 growth regent. 800 fine lightweight plumes. And then just start it. This will acquire you one royal plume, which together with your one tier 4 pet, you can use to train that tier 4 into a tier 5 pet. So yeah, just click a button that should be somewhere around here that looks like a crown, which will, well, give your tier 5 pet a crown, and then you can now murder stuff more efficiently. Did you do all the seasons, but you still have an itch to play a different class? Well, well, let's turn your tagging system into something more interesting. I yes, it's another quest line from the suggested tab. Completing it will let you copy your gear to other characters in exchange for Marnie's view. You can get Marnie's view at the old moon manager. The cost of Marnie's view scales directly with the price of your items on the marketplace. So every time you use the system, you want to only tag the weapon because armors, accessories and alchemy stones can be worn by any character. This is purely a silver saving tip by the way. Okay. You know, all of those inventory expansion coupons you get during the season and from events, they can be used on any character. I put this as a tip here because I assumed they were character bound when I started out. Lastly, events. I will be trying to make a point here, so give me a bit of time. At the release of this video, there should be a few events running. A fishing event, which requires you to fish. A cup event, which uh, will give you an item that you can exchange into whole cups or their fragments. And the guild league event, which is a 15 people PvP. Okay, now what I'm trying to point at here is that you should ideally keep track of all these events because at the time of writing this there are 16 events and they all end at different times and for all of them you need to do different stuff i understand that staying on top of them can quickly make you dizzy so here's my solution just use garmod every time there's a new maintenance just pop that bad dragon open and take a look at what's going on. You can middle click this and it will link right to the event page. It also has codes, uh, TLDR, I mentioned codes in another video, but yeah, generally they range from useless to extremely useful stuff. So yeah, it is insane that there is so many events running. So just use a third party website to mitigate an upcoming headache. Thanks for watching and have a beautiful day.